the simulation has outrun the so-called reality. That concept in Baudrillard he calls the hyperreal. Hyperreality is more real than real. It's more real than real. In the world of Baudrillard, social relations have disappeared between humans because humans have begun to disappear. In fact, Baudrillard thinks that reality itself is in the process of disappearing, the real. Reality is simply that which can be simulated, Xeroxed, copied. Gay Debord wrote a book in the 60s called The Society of the Spectacle. And what it was about was about how when capitalism reached a certain level of accumulation, commodities began to detach themselves and become images. Instead of like going to a family reunion now, we'll just rent. You know, a Steve Martin Father of the Bride movie. It's just as good, and so on, and, and you meet the same kooky characters that you actually know. Their behavior is all simulatable. You see, commodities are no longer just things of use. They've become part of what we are, and we need to recognize it. If there will be battles over this new terrain and on it, many of them will be fought on the terrain itself, television radio, magazine, as I've called it, the obscenity of the saturated communicational culture, saturated with information, obscenely oversaturated, because the secret of a postmodern society is that everything that was directly lived has moved away into a representation or an image. Everything that was directly lived has moved away into a representation or an image. So that we, as it were, enjoy the vicarious pleasure of a flying body. We hear the jingle, be like Michael, be like Michael. Jordan finds the open man. He goes for two and takes possession of a delicious big breakfast and a hot egg McMuffin. Jordan sets. He puts it up and it's good. We participate vicariously in the beauty of the body, but this time as an image. What about the ecology movement? We live in an environment where its most famous spokesman is the McDonald's Corporation. I mean, the possibilities for radical subjectivities arising under these conditions become exceedingly bizarre. The postmodern is a blurring of the lines between human beings and machines a blurring of the line between reality and image, in incredible information overloads, with information moving at incredible speed. At some point in the development of technology, human beings ceased to be the reason of things, and things took on their own reasons. Now, if you want an existentialist, as I said earlier, you'll see Bill and Ted's bogus adventure. Iron Maiden? Excellent! Execute them. I talked about how children used to learn morality from their parents, and now I think that Super Mario Brothers, th they spend much more time with Super Mario Brothers and are much more, uh, like, emotionally involved with Nintendo than they are with their aunts, their uncles, their mothers and their fathers. I asked one of my children, why are you yelling at a machine when he began to bang his Nintendo? And he looked at me as though I were a being from another world. And because of that, there is a postmodern trajectory. I am from another world. I'm still, as it were, caught in the modern. He's not. Why not be emotional with a machine? His peers are machine-like. We've already discussed that. I mean, in fact, what he sees on the Nintendo screen is his thrill of the day. That's the most active he's seen any simulated image that day. You have to have injections of reality in order to keep the images afloat occasionally. Are these reality shows? They've realized that, that we've become, as it were, too intoxicated with hyper-reality, with, you know, Kojak and 
and, you know, super cops and so on. So now we just have shows like Cops, where you just go to Fort Worth and film a bunch of cops being cops. That serves a good, intelligent economic interest because you don't pay cops much just for being cops. It's not that lucrative. And it injects, well, is it reality? Well, it is compared only to this scale of hyper-reality and only under the sign of being whatever can be simulated. I mean, you go to see Jurassic Park or an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie for the ecstasy of communication. By that I mean for the pure neural thrill. Wow, a T-Rex, oh, a raptor, and it just runs through you, raptors, T-Rexes, or Arnold just beats up people that, you know, you view as bad or coded as bad by the society. And there's this visceral, ecstatic feel. It's more visceral, it's more direct. It's more like the ecstasy that your children feel when they beat, you know, the worst monster at the highest level of the Link 2, you know, one of those new video games. They beat the big monster, and there's just a visceral, neural thrill of ecstasy. Honey, why not tonight? Why don't we really make love, the two of us, instead of getting in our virtual reality sex machines? That may become a revolutionary move in the, in the near future. Clearly, the technologies that are coming, and, and I'll mention a few of them, virtual reality suits, you know, well, oh, wow, now he's flipped, virtual reality suits. No, they were actually de uh, developed for quite sensible reasons. They were developed for long space flights back in the days when NASA thought they were going to go on long space flights. Now we understand that there's no need to because we can go to Epcot Center and experience one, so we don't need it for the consuming public. That's because we can already experience a long space flight at Epcot Center. It is becoming our culture and way of life. I'm just describing it. I don't even know how to denounce it. This is not a criticism. Some parts of it make me feel giddy and kind of excited because virtual reality suits, if we let our imaginations go for a moment, could have endless fascinating possibilities. Right? Right. Sure. Well, now the virtual reality suit is, is being, they're working on marketable versions, and that means ones that are cost effective which means that we're still living in relations of capital because that means somebody wants to make a dollar, which is okay. So do I. So do you. There's no reason in recognizing a necessity, no matter how cruel the necessity is. You've got to recognize it. Now, that's a product we'll want to buy. Many of us. The product we'll want to buy. Uh, the problem with this advancing culture is that that is buying just like in, the, in, in an earlier period of capital when you bought the wage labor of someone to do the work for you now what we're buying are instruments and equipments that do the experiencing for us that was a, a part of my critique of all these instant therapies is to buy a life story for yourself immediately that can be swallowed painlessly you know and when you buy a virtual reality suit, or what I call virtual reality eyes, which is television, if you look at virtual reality, it provides you a prepackaged experience. One that has, is already coded for you. In other words, designed with your mind in mind. What the postmodern trajectory means is that the self is not under siege, it's lost. If we were really in a postmodern society, we wouldn't still be discussing things like the self under siege or the real. They would simply have disappeared. It may become interesting if a candidate runs for an office and actually believes one thing. Well, that'd be, that'd be an, an incredible new politics. You know, everybody in America wants a new politics. Well, go out and find somebody that believes one damn thing and running for something. You'll have a new politics. The struggle in the future may be to maintain the real against the unreal or the hyper-real or the irreal.